Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, and that's Payne spelled P-A-Y-N-E, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan. And yes, he's my father too, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious February weekend? You're actually here in New York, which is pretty exciting. It is, Ryan. I really appreciate you hosting Mom and I, and we're having a great time. I mean, it's really weird to be in a city where they don't roll up the sidewalks at nine o'clock at night like they do in Naples. <laughs> well, the trade-off is the weather's much better in Naples, Bob. And right now, I'd rather have less action and more warm weather. So I think you're in the right place. You know, I dressed warmly. I feel good. Having a great time. Love the city. But all oh, honesty, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> Back to Naples. The jacuzzi is calling in the Lenar. Yes. Uh, well, we got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about investor biases. Bob and I are going to discuss the behavior that leads us to make bad financial decisions and how to avoid them. We're going to talk about the desire to retirement. How strong is your desire to finally retire? We're going to explore the different levels of desire to retire and how to plan accordingly, along with this week's financial propaganda. That's where we call out the worst advice, best advice. The financial media has recently been broadcasting. And on our spotlight segment today, we have our financial advisor, Aaron Dessen. He's going to be with us. He's going to break someone's real retirement plan down for you. So let's hop to it. So Bob, the European Financial Review recently released a study on the ways that certain biases impact our financial behavior and decisions. So I thought we could discuss some of these tendencies and how they can adversely affect our behavior as an investor. And one of the big ones is we call it confirmation bias. What is that and why is it a bad thing? Well, it's something that we all experience, right? I mean, just think about any article you read in the newspaper, on the internet, on the blog. Two sentences in, if it doesn't agree with your current opinion, you dismiss the article, right? You only read things that support your current opinion. That's called confirmation bias. Well, it gets crazier now. Apparently with Facebook, they have algorithms that only promote articles and things that support your view. So you're never getting any other view when it comes to anything. And we know as an investor, one of the things, one of our tenants is you just have to be so open-minded. You know, you can't let your politics get involved. We talked about that a lot. You can't let the news media get involved. And that can be really dangerous when you start to believe something too much or believe your own BS, as they like to say. Well, that's a t the case, right? If you have confirmation bias, the market can stay illogical in your opinion and your view longer than you can stay solid. It can cost you a ton of money. That's why we're so adamant that you build your portfolio around your goals so that your biases don't get in the way and you know essentially help you to make bad decisions because you don't want that. Yeah, right. Because as soon as you are confirming your bias, and then you make an investment in something that doesn't work temporarily, you then decide it never works. So over the last 40 or 50 years, what you end up doing is redlining these ideas. I don't invest in oil stocks anymore. I don't buy tech stocks. I got burnt in, you know, in 2000. So suddenly you're left with you know, buying CDs and money market funds. So it can really hurt you because confirmation bias leads to prejudice. And we don't want to be a prejudiced person. Yeah, prejudice is bad, always bad, especially when it comes to investing. Another one of these biases is loss aversion biases, where we become oversensitive to risk of loss and then we become reluctant to take action because of our fear of bad outcomes, which can be a big deal. We see that a lot now. Hey, Ryan, you hit the nail on the head. Losses loom larger than gains. You ever wonder why your old man never goes to a casino? I hate losses. <laughs> I cannot handle putting money down on the table and then it's gone. It's not for me. Yeah, no, exactly. And we've seen this all the time. And a good example of this would be the S&P 500 had a tremendous decline back in 2008. And how many of us just never got fully back into the market because we were so afraid to have that happen again. And meanwhile, we've been in a bull market now. We're in our 12th year of a bull market, which is crazy. So it can be really dangerous, you know, letting your experience in the past, you know, really prohibit you from making good decisions in the future. And this is why it's so important to get invested and not sit in cash. And the thing is, you know, I don't like to use the word trick, but you can trick your brain into overcoming that bias, right? Right? By following a process, following a discipline, by only taking so much risk, as opposed to putting it all on the table. It's not all or none. It's not black or red. You know, you're not playing blackjack. You know, you're not playing, you know, roulette. You're investing. It's a big difference. Well, it's a good point. I, I talked to a client this past week who they have a lot of real estate actually down in Costa Rica. 
and they're, they're looking to sell it because they need to generate income for retirement. But they said, you know what? If we give you that money back in 2008, we lost $300,000. If we give you that money, is the same thing going to happen? And I said, no, <laughs> we're not going to. You were aggressively invested back then with an advisor who didn't have a game plan. To your point about all or nothing, Bob, a lot of that money is going to go to things like bonds. A lot of that's going to go to income producing investments that have nothing to do with the ups and downs of the market. And that's essentially the kind of plan you want to build when you want to start thinking about pulling from your portfolio. You know, that, that's the whole point, right? The Dow Jones Industrial Average is at 29,000. Now, somewhere back in history, it started at zero. When's the last time it was at zero again? <laughs> yeah, never. Never. Yeah. So, you know, markets go up two steps up, one step back. You know, you just got to incorporate that into your process. That's how you overcome some of these biases. So another one, Bob, is called the disposition mm. effect bias, holding on to investments that are well past their usefulness or refusing to invest in something you should invest in. We see this all the time. Well, you know, actually, I think there's there's something going on, right? Because I've seen this my whole career. Somebody will take a flyer on a speculation. I don't know, a penny stock or some crazy idea. And they'll right. lose their shirt, right? They'll lose their shirt on the investment, but they won't sell it because they're just hoping and praying that it comes back. And then one <laughs> like day they sell say. it. And as soon as they sell it, what happens? It, it goes up and then they're, then they're not happy. And they're ruined for life, right? So you have this disposition effect bias because it actually happens to you. So the only way around that is to diversify the living daylights out of your portfolio and not make any big bets because it'll drive you crazy. Which will go to our, our last, I think, most important bias, which is hindsight bias, believing that after the fact that a past event was predictable and obvious, when in reality, this would probably couldn't have been reasonably predictable at all. This is how we all invest. Like, it's a no-brainer. You should invest in tech stocks uh, 10 years ago. Or, you know, there's plenty of those you can get, use an example of. Well, you see the same thing with sports gambling, right? Well, this team won the NFL West. They're going to win the uh, Super Bowl, right? So everybody tries to find a pattern, tries to find some reason. But, you know, this is a famous Bobism, right? Past performance is 100% indicative <laughs> of past performance. That's all it is. Well, it's, it's the other thing too. Like, of course, oh, obviously you should invest in an Apple. Like, no. You know, there was a point when Apple almost went bankrupt <laughs> when Steve Jobs was kicked out of the company. These things you can't foresee in the past. If you would have bought Amazon after one public, it went down 80% at one point. You probably wouldn't have the tenacity to sit in that stock. It's not that obvious. And as you like to say, Bob, well, if you pick the last winner, what's the next winner? <laughs> and yeah. probably you don't know what the next winner is going to be. Uh, come on, Rye. If you put $10 million into Amazon stock and you are only down $8 million, you're going to tell me you're not going to step up to the plate and put the rest of your net worth into that stock? I just would have gone away for a couple of years, lived on a boat and watched no news, and then I probably could have held on to the stock for the, the whole decade. Yeah. So I think the thing we have to recognize here is we all have a bias, right? It's wired into our DNA. We have to recognize it, note, call it what it is, but I'll tell you what, hindsight bias can be the most dangerous to your portfolio strategy. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a real game plan that's based on my goals, not my human behavior, which is not very helpful when it comes to investing, here's your shot to do it. We have 10 slots. If you have over $500,000 saved for retirement and you call or text us right now, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. All you need to do is bring those statements in, bring them in the office, print them off the computer. We're going to take all that data from all your statements and build for you your own personalized financial portal where we get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture. Then we're going to be able to look at your portfolio and look at all the analytics that are critical. We're going to look at everything from income. You need income when you're retired. Where are you going to draw from from your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio fill in that income gap and put in a real income plan for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. What underlying risk in your portfolio do you have that you don't know about? If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden risks are in your portfolio, show you how to protect your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios, those mutual funds you own, with insurance products, annuities. Bob and I are going to show you where all the hidden costs are how to reduce those costs, and then optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together, 
into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over 500000 for your retirement. My son, Ryan, and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. There's no plan. Let's call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is Bob Payne, and I'm hanging out here in a Big Apple with my son, Rye Payne, and we're the pains of no pain, no gain, financial radio. Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio, and that's P-A-Y-N-E. And Bob and I, as you know, we're very simple men, and we like to keep it simple for you, just give you that common sense, practical advice you can use for your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year in 2020, and we give you all the highlights from the new tax reform the SECURE Act, there's a lot of new tax benefits that are available to you that you want to take advantage of. We give you all the highlights of that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, spelled B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year and give you the highlights of the new tax reform, the SECURE Act, some new ways to save on taxes, money saved in taxes, just as green as any money can make invested. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, depending on your specific situation, your desire to find a retirement date may be very different than your peers. So I thought we could explore these different levels of desire to retire and how you should plan accordingly. And level one being, I don't see myself ever retiring. I love what I do. We hear that a lot. Some of our clients just love their profession and they can just keep going and going. So, right, isn't that what all the life coaches tell you? You know, find a, a business or a job where it's your hobby, where you don't feel like you're working and you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, I think I know about, I don't know, a couple of people that feel that way. I mean, we like our job, but uh, I don't think everyone says that about their job for sure. Yeah, and I think it's not all about retirement. It's like it's being able to retire, right? I think that's the, I think the most important part of this. You know, a lot of people say, hey, I'm already retired. I just haven't signed the paperwork. Matter of fact, I think you said that to me the other day, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you're dreaming, Bob. I think I had you sign a contract to extend another 15 years, so you're locked in. Oh, all right. Well, eh, I guess I can handle that. But, you know, let's let's think about retirement a little differently, Rye. What's a good way to really form the idea of retirement in your mind? Yeah, I think, Bob, I think the misconception here, I don't like to use the word retirement per se. I think a better euphemism for retirement now is financial independence, right? What's that date of financial independence? Because look, you may love your job. I mean, we love our job. We have a lot of clients that they don't want to stop working. But what if you can't work because maybe you have an injury, maybe you get downsized. There's a lot of things outside your control. Wouldn't it be nice to have everything set up just in case? Yeah. The thing is, you want to have it in writing, right? I think it just drives me crazy that so many of you Sit there and wonder, do I have enough invested? Do I have enough saved? What are my expenses going to be? What are some of the unknowns? And you just uh, say, oh, well, I'll just uh, watch another sitcom and not worry about it. You know, you really have to have a written plan to know what your unique situation is and what you need to do. Well, I think it comes down to just the pragmatic thing. If you stop working yeah. tomorrow unexpectedly, what's your income plan? How are you going to draw from your portfolio? Where's that income going to come from? So having that income plan in place is critical. Because you may have a lot of assets and you may have saved, but pulling from your assets is a whole other story. What's the best way to do it from a tax perspective? There's a lot of things that need to be thought about and designed. Yeah, because if you really focus in on taxes, a lot of cases, you can retire right now. I had a great meeting the other night, Rye, with uh, 
uh, scientist from one of the pharmaceutical companies and her husband's in a, a pharmaceutical executive. And we've done a great job and they've done a great job of saving. And they, they said, boy, these projections look good, Bob. And I said, yeah, you can retire now. And she said, yeah, I'm going to call tomorrow and, and, and resign. Her husband Did wasn't she? very happy with me, you know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, it's good no, to know. The second level of that would be, I guess I could retire, but they pay me pretty well and I don't hate it. So I might as well keep working. That's kind of like when you're just too lazy to sit down to see if you could retire. You just keep working because it's just too hard to deal with it. You know, Ryan, do you know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing every day over and over again. Yeah, expecting a different result. So, you know, <laughs> if you're going to go to work every day because they treat you pretty well and you don't hate it, you might as well keep working. Sounds like you're a little bit insane. You got to well, take the next step. It's like you say, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> so, <No. laughs> and this is where, again, you know, just starting to tally up things that you have and starting to look at what, you know, where are all my assets? What are they doing right now? You can start to get a tangible picture, which makes it easier to start thinking about retirement as opposed to just pushing it off. Which brings me to level three, Bob, and that's I'd like to retire in a few years, but I have no idea when I really can. We'll find out. <laughs> well, you can find out. And, and I got great news for everybody. Every single person I've ever met in my career who sat down in our offices found the same thing. You're taking more risk than you have to to retire comfortably. You're already there and you don't know it. Yeah, just like the thought of having all these assets out there in the ether somewhere that you know you saved, but they, they're not together. You don't know what it looks like in one place. It is a huge deal. Just doing that tally up and knowing what you have and putting some structure to things just puts you in such a better place than just thinking, ah, oh, you know, I, I don't know if I can or I can't. Why not know, like you said, Bob? Well, you always tell me, right, a lot of, uh, a lot of you have collections of investments and yeah, it's okay. So, you know, have investments, but understand the risk in those investments, right? They're, they're not going to do any good if they have overnight all of a sudden. So yes. you really do need to know what you own. And more importantly, when it comes to planning, you got to know why you own it. And more important now, because we're in our 12th year of the market going up, odds are your portfolio just by the nature of the market going up is getting riskier and riskier every single day the market goes up. You have to readjust that risk. And you always want to do it proactively, not reactive, because the market goes down. Guess what? It's too late. Yeah, but you know what, Ryan? That's what really ticks me off. The market's up for 12 years, and I'm 12 years older, and so are all of you. And a lot of you are still following the same strategy you were 12 years ago, even though you've made a lot of money. That's not right. You know, you got to do something about it. You got to take an interest. You got to take some action. Just because Bob's hair still looks good doesn't mean you know you shouldn't change your investment strategy. I think that's the moral of the story there, Bob. Hey, Ryan, I just want to be clear about this for the people on our blog. You know, I was born gray. I'm turning prematurely blind. <laughs> so in case you're wondering, you know, what's uh, this is this is uh, going through a transition right now. Duly noted. Level four, Bob. And this reminds me of my aunt, your sister. I want to retire tomorrow. If I don't quit this job right now, they might have to put me into an asylum. And that's how she felt the end of career corporate America. But you kept saying, just hold on one or two more years. Sometimes that one, two year difference can be the difference between a great retirement and just not making it. Yeah, you know what? It's just, um, and that was, that's what happens. A lot of times when you get into a big corporation, it dawns on me, right, that somehow people never graduate from the sandbox in, you know, in the playground. <laughs> it's the so petty funny. politics of business. And, you know, you just see people just, just because they can, making other people's lives miserable. And if that's you, you know, you got to do something about it. But they're paying you a lot of money. Don't throw it away. And, you know, Ryan, I encouraged your aunt to stay two more years, even though she didn't need the money. And guess what she did with it? She took all of her nieces and nephews on trips around the world. So you can thank me now. You can thank me later. But, you know, <laughs> planning works. She took a lot of her nieces and nephews on a trip. I'm still waiting. So if my aunt's listening this morning, I'd love to go somewhere. All right. Duly noted, Ryan. Hey, if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to know if I can retire comfortably. I need to know if I'm in a position to fill that income gap that Ryan Payne talks about every week at nauseum. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're one of our next eight callers and you've saved over 500000 for retirement, well, here's your chance. Ryan and I are going to create for you your own 360 financial portal. This is a financial GPS, no different than the one in your car that will tell you where you are and tell you where you're going and report daily on the progress of your journey to financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and the best, most efficient route to achieve your goals. 
It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you to avoid those financial potholes and dead ends of the typical cookie cutter financial plan. It will update your net worth in real time on a daily basis so you'll always know where you are and more importantly, where you're going. In addition, we're going to take all those statements, that collection of investments, and make sense out of it for you. We're going to break it down to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Are you truly diversified? Do you have too much risk in a category that might be doing well right now? But remember, nothing grows to the sky. And you want to be certain that you're taking risk off the table as your net worth goes up. We want to look at fees and cost. You know, Rye says they're hidden. Ah, we see them. It's clear as day to us. And we're going to show you exactly where those hidden fees are because I don't know about you. I despise being overcharged. And I really would get ticked off if I found out my own portfolio was overcharging me. And lastly, income. We talked about it a lot today. You need that income, that dependable, repeatable income to fill that gap if you're about to retire. Now, for all of you that are retired, you got one goal for the rest of your life. Stay that way. And that comes from a dependable, repeatable income stream. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. Believe it or not, for four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Give us a call or text at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next eight callers, you have over $500,000 safe for retirement at 844-752-6692. That's call or text at 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion. Make sure you're on track for retirement or if you're retired now at 844 844- 752-6692. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call it the best advice, worst advice the financial media has recently been broadcasting so you can make the best decisions about your planning and investing. Bob, you and I, we just have those articles going back and forth all week. I get up on Sunday and I've got 10 emails from Bob Payne with the latest financial news. What do you want to talk about today? What kind of stuff did you find out there that you know our listeners need to know about? You know, I, I just, uh, on the calls that I've made to my clients over the last two months, the real focus has been on this coronavirus and what's the impact and you know, how's that going to hurt the market? And, you know, and uh, you know, what about all this volatility? Well, you know, the message that I've been sending them is, you know, we always got to stay the course, right? Because, you know, we had 91 days without a single decline of more than 1%. And then some negative news came out, it dropped 4%. Isn't that normal? That is normal, right? I mean, for a normal yeah. year, market correction, we call those market corrections. And they do happen. And I don't even want to, I don't want to discount the severity of the coronavirus. It's a scary thing. But odds are, it's probably something temporary. Whereas, let's be real. Trade's going to continue regardless. That trade's mm-hmm. not a temporary thing. You know, companies are, are going to start resuming business again. That's not temporary. So to make a temporary investment strategy when all the fundamentals of companies growing over time and nations trading, that's going to continue, doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not a smart move to just move your money to cash or something like that. Yeah. And I think the whole idea is you have to embrace volatility because without volatility, there's no opportunity, right? If the market yes. went straight up, you know, when would you ever buy low? Well, that's the thing. You always think you're going to get better and better prices if you wait longer, but you're never going to get the bottom correct. And one thing we've talked about a long time, Bob, is we're in a bull market. <laughs> Economy is strong. Unemployment's low. Profits are going up. This is not the time to try to find the best spot to get in the market. If you get a correction or a sell-off in the market, take advantage of it. Yeah, right. I mean, we really look at volatility, look at corrections, whether they're 4%, or sometimes seven and eight percent. That's normal. In the course of a year, we're going to have three to four of those, and you've got to have some, you know, dry powder to take advantage of them. But uh, you know, no dip in history has ever been permanent. They've all been temporary. That's right. So if you've been sitting with a lot of cash on the sideline, and there's a good chance you have been, take advantage of these dips as an opportunity 
And don't wait for the perfect moment. There's never a perfect moment. There's not going to be some magic, I don't know, signal from the sky that's going to tell you this is the day to get in. If you're a long-term investor, take advantage of the dips. Don't be looking at it as a reason to panic. It's probably not a good idea. You know, Ryan, that's, that's the thing. Don't fool yourself, right? There is volatility. Don't try and time the market. I had a client a couple of years ago who called me up and said, I'm not timing the market, Bob. I've just made enough. <laughs> I mean, I'd never heard that one before. I made enough. No, you didn't. You missed out on a 9,000 point move uh, because he made enough. That's fear. You know, fear is not a strategy. Investing based on planning is the only way to do it. Only way to do it is we talk about over and over again. And I found a very interesting article. And there's been a lot of articles like this that you and I have been passing back and forth. And we've been talking a lot about the bond market. And the bond market is getting a little bit scary. In fact, if last week, as the market was going up, Investors poured $23.6 billion into fixed income mutual funds and exchange traded funds. And why this is scary is because there's so much money, Bob, being put into these bond funds. And as our listeners know, bond funds have a lot of risk that you don't know you're actually getting into. No, they have a lot of risk, Ryan. You know, I, I'm famous for calling them heads you lose, tails you lose. You know, how, what does that really mean? Well, it means that first off, in a bond fund, your money doesn't come due. And the idea of owning bonds is for safety. And if your money doesn't return, you don't have a return of your principal or maturity date, that's your first problem. Yeah, because if you have a bond portfolio that's open ended, that means anybody can add money in. And as rates go down, the bond manager has to buy bonds at a lower interest rate, lower than when you put your money in. So, like you always say, right? It's like being on an elevator with a bunch of people you don't like. Because <laughs> that elevator goes down, you're in big trouble. Now, the scariest thing, Bob, that I found was with these bond funds, you don't know what you own. We've talked about that a lot. But what we're finding is many of the underlying securities frequently aren't set by the market, but by pricing services with what we would call stale data. So it's not even being priced really on what the market is. So if interest rates go up and bond prices go down, a lot of this stuff is never traded before, which could be a very scary place to be. Yeah, I think that's a thing that surprises a lot of you is that you know you can go and look on your computer and you can get a price on a stock with a click of a button, but you can't with a bond. You know bonds change inter dealers. Sometimes bonds don't change change hands at all, and it might be a bond that you have no idea what the value is because it, nobody's bought or sold it for a long time, right? All markets are auctions, right? A good analogy for that would be as if you bought a piece of real estate, I don't know, in the middle of the woods somewhere near nobody else that hasn't been bought or sold in a hundred years. So you don't really know what the price is when it finally is time to sell that. Let's say it's a panic sale because that's when it's going to get sold. You know, the price could just be anyone's guess and probably a lot lower because the demand for it's going to be like zero. And that's just a great example because who the heck wants a piece of real estate in the woods, right? When so when things are on fire and you can buy high quality real estate, you know, that's at good prices, you're not going to go buy the the you know the piece of real estate in the woods that nobody wants. So the bid is going to be horrible. You know, Bob, it kind of reminds me of that Capital One credit card commercial where it says, what's in your wallet? Well, what's in your portfolio? What's in your bond funds? I don't really want to know. <laughs> I would just recommend sell those suckers like yesterday because when it ends, it's not if, it's when, it's going to be very badly. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need to know what I own in my portfolio, I think I might have some of these bond funds that aren't as safe because I heard Ryan and Bob talking this morning. Here's your shot to get a full analysis of your portfolio. If you're one of the next six callers and you have over $500,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. All you need to do is bring those statements in, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal so you can get a bird's eye view of your entire net worth and start making good decisions about it. We're going to look at everything from income Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan for retirement? Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio and build an income plan so you have an income stream for life. And we're going to look at diversification. There's a lot of underlying risk in your portfolio you don't know you have. If the market goes down tomorrow, are you protected? We're going to show you where all those hidden risks are and show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in these investment portfolios, especially those bond funds, bond mutual funds, insurance products, annuities, 
We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio, show you how to reduce it, then optimize your portfolio for taxes so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, determine that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has literally worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And make your claim. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. So if you're one of our next six callers, we only have six spots left, and you've saved over 500000 for retirement, my son Ryan and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. But there won't be a plan unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 pl a N N Y C. Hey, this is Bob, and I'm with Rye, and we're the pains of no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain. Financial Radio, and of course, that's P A Y N E. And Bob and I want to make sure you're making common sense, practical decisions when it comes to your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year, 2020, but we also give you the highlights of the new SECURE Act, which is a new tax reform. There's a lot of new tax benefits you can take advantage of. We give you all the highlights of that. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, the 555-888. That's the word bullish, the 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year and give you all the highlights from the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, the 555 888. That's the word bullish, the 555 888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Go to www.bebullish.com. That's www.bebullish.com. You can subscribe to the show. You can get the show in podcast form. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but you got to check it out for yourself. Go to bebullish.com and you can learn more about Payne Capital Management, our firm. Also, every week, On most major networks, you can catch myself and other advisors at our firm on Fox Business News, CNBC, Yahoo Finance, talking about our latest views on the economy and the market. And if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, we answer all your questions directly. Simply email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. And we have our man in the studio, Dan Irving to help us with questions today. What's shaking, Dan? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I am doing well, feeling great. I just found out the results of my tax return filing, so I'm feeling pretty flush with cash right now. So you don't know. (laughs) Just got to wait for it to come in, and then I'll be ready to spend. I'm looking forward to it. Might be time for you to move to New York, Dan. Yeah, yeah, I should do that. (laughs) And move into a shoebox here in the city. You know? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a great plan. It's probably all I could afford. <laughs> uh, we got some great questions on the mailbag today. Our first mm-hmm. one is from Daryl in White Plains, New York. Daryl says, Bob, I'm 60 years old and I've just been given two options at work. I can keep working and retire in five to six years with a pension, or I can retire now and take a severance package and a pension buyout. How do I weigh my options? Well, you know what? That's a great question, Daryl. And we see this a lot. You know, we see these options come out and it's very difficult just to look at the face of things to think, you know, what's one's better than the other. You need to run some numbers, right? You need to do some projections, right? To show yeah. what the impact is of five or six more years of saving or putting that money to work or taking a pension. There's a lot of work to be done here. Yeah. One of the big questions is to replicate that pension. And that's what you would do if you took the money is make your own pension is what kind of rate of return would you need to achieve to basically take the same money out of your own money than you would the pension. And then you can figure out if it's a big, you know, if it's 10% a year, well, then maybe the pension is a better deal, but you have to figure those kind of numbers out. And it also comes down to, you know, what type of a lifestyle are you going to have, right? What do you want to do in retirement? We talked a lot about this today, about what your retirement lifestyle is going to look like. You might be better off quitting right now at 60 if you have, you know, 
a planned strategy for what you're going to do for the rest of your life. But how about as a rule of thumb, right? Is it better to work five or six more years or to retire early? It really depends on that severance package. And this is why you have to run the plan because a lot of times taking the lump sum could be better. Because the other thing is, a lot of times that pension is tied in with that company. If that company goes bankrupt, so yeah. goes your pension. That can be a lot of risk, especially in retirement. And, and a lot of times these pensions run by insurance companies. And remember, any investment with insurance companies is a contract. So they're going to invest your money the same way you can, but they're going to take a big chunk as a fee. So it's uh, you know something they really want to look at the numbers. But um, you know, that, Brian, you talk about the financial red zone. Isn't that 60 to 65 year, the financial red zone? You can really plow a lot of money away and make yourself financially secure no matter how long you live. That's right. And we talked about working maybe that extra year or two before retirement can have a huge impact because not only is it two more years you're working, but it's also two years you're not drawing from your portfolio. So a lot of times, like we were talking about my aunt, your sister, in the earlier segment, in her case, it was better to get a couple more years of work, take that big paycheck before she finally started to live off the land per se. Yeah. And it's not just a paycheck. It's two more years of contributing to your 401k, two more years of compounding, right? Two more years of compounding in your personal portfolio, two more years of putting your expenses through the company and not through your personal checking account. By the way, Ryan, you've been putting a lot of expenses through the company <laughs> lately. I just wanted to bring that up. I don't think I'm the one who bought a new BMW, but let's, I digress. Maybe we can do the next question. Well, it's half yours. It's half yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go to Naples to enjoy it. Next question, Dan. All right. Our next question is from Roy. <laughs> Roy in Red Bank, New Jersey. Roy says, Ryan, we're currently building our dream home and we'll be moving in within the next 12 to 18 months. My question is whether or not to sell our current house after we move out and invest the cash or keep it as a rental property for retirement income. Well, you have to run the numbers on this, but I have to say, when you own property and you rent it out, we call that sweat equity. <laughs> and to me, Bob, when you're looking to get closer to retirement, you're looking to simplify your life. A lot of times when you own real estate, it can be a lot more work. And last time I looked, Bob, your municipal bond portfolio is not going to call because the roof needs to be replaced. Nothing worse than getting a call at two o'clock in the morning with a stopped toilet, right? I'm telling you, I was there once and never go back. <laughs> but, you know, here's the other thing, you know, Roy's building his dream home. So chances are the house that he's currently in is getting older. And every time you have a home, you know, things break down, the air conditioning, the heater, the roof, the landscaping. Oh, my goodness, right? It can go on and on and on. It can be really awful. And again, going back to not an on and on proposition, because the fear could be, well, if I sell the property, now I put into the stock market and the stock market goes down, I lose all my money. That's a risky proposition. The idea is you want to build an income solution. You want to build a portfolio that has lots of different investments that generates a lot of current income that has nothing to do with the stock market. And that takes a lot of risk out of the equation, a lot of the headaches out of the equation. No, same thing happens and applies to a real estate property, right? You could be in an area where you know the company is downsized and all of a sudden, you know, take Atlantic City, which is not too far from where I live in, at the Jersey Shore, you know, when the casinos all shut down, in 08 and 09, the real estate values dropped like a stone. You couldn't sell your house for anywhere near what you paid for it. And I think we're past the age of believing that real estate's just going to go up and up. <laughs> There's a time when we all believe that, and it's just not true. So your point, Bob, you don't know what kind of appreciation you're going to get. The income's going to be sweat income because you've got to have tenants in there and you've got to manage that. Man, a passive portfolio of income sounds pretty good to me right now. So Ryan, I'm going to ask you a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, in terms of being financially organized, where would you put Daryl and Roy? I have to say they're thinking about the right questions. Obviously, they have a lot of planning to do. So let's give them you know, both a solid five, Bob. My benevolence has no limits this morning. I think that's probably coming from hanging around with me this weekend. You know, you're feeling a little more upbeat, a little more positive. I appreciate that. So let me ask all of you, on a scale of 1 to 10, in terms of being financially organized, what would Ryan give you? I'll tell you, I got a better question. What would your spouse give you? Would they give you a five? Or would they give you a 10? And if you, you know, you're not a 10, why wouldn't you want to be? And here's your chance. If you're one of our next four callers, and we only have four spots left, and you've saved over 500000 for your retirement, my son and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. This is a financial GPS, no different than the one in your car or your truck, where it'll map out where you're going and report daily on your progress to your financial independence. It will define your financial timeline and map out the best 
most efficient route to achieve all of your goals. It will put your financial life on autopilot and help you avoid those financial potholes and those dead ends of a typical cookie cutter financial plan you find on the internet. It will update your net worth in real time, monitor your progress so you'll always know where you are financially, and most importantly, you'll know where you're going with the least amount of risk and the highest certainty. In addition, we're going to look at your portfolios. You know, grab those statements that just came in for February. You know, they were down a little bit. January was a down month. Don't despair, but throw them in a shopping bag, throw them in a folder. We're going to break all that collection of investments into one easy, cohesive strategy to understand, to see if you have the three key elements of a successful portfolio. Are you truly diversified? The only free lunch on Wall Street is diversification. Are you paying for your lunch? You know, there's lots of hidden costs out there, lots of fees buried deep in that prospectus and that annuity contract. We want to show you where they are. They're in plain sight. You just don't know where to look. And we want to reduce those fees so it'll increase your income because income is something we all need in retirement. We have that gap we have to fill when the company stops sending the paycheck. And if you're retired right now, well, your number one goal is to stay that way. So we want to make sure that you have a dependable, repeatable income stream. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we're going to answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Six six nine two. We have four slots left. If you have over five hundred thousand dollars safe for retirement, call or text at eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Here's a shot to get a second opinion. Make sure you're on track at eight four four Plan NYC. That's eight four four P L A N N Y C. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. It's no pain, no gain financial radio, and that's pain, P-A-Y-N-E. And Bob and I want to make sure that every week you're getting common sense, practical advice. That's why we put together our newest guide. We give you five ways to save on taxes this year, and we give you the highlights from the new Secure Act. It's a new tax reform. There's a lot of new tax benefits you can take advantage of, and you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, 555-888. That's the word bullish, 555-888. We give you five ways to save on taxes in 2020. And we give you the highlights from the new SECURE Act, give you some new ways to save on taxes. Money saved in taxes, just as green as any money you can make invested. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, the 555-888. That's the word bullish, the 555-888. And now... We have a very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Pain Capital Management, Mr. Aaron Dessen. Aaron, how's it going today, man? It's going good, man. How you guys doing? Good. I'm doing great, Aaron. Up here, I'm up here to Big Apple with Ryan. Didn't realize that uh, winter was going on. What happened to this temperature? <laughs> <laughs> sure you don't mind the global warming being up north, Bob? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm ready for global warming. <laughs> So Aaron, this is our spotlight segment. Every week what we do is we take a real financial plan and we talk about how we uncovered some of the flaws, what we call pain points, P-A-Y-N-E, so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their planning and investing. You worked on a case recently. Why don't you break it down for us and tell you how you got us and tell us how you got this couple on their path to what we call financial freedom. Yeah, absolutely. So recently, uh, I met with a couple in their 70s. They're retired. Uh, They were listening to the show and really wanted to come in and see, you know, what is a way that they can grow their money without taking a lot of risk in a moderate way and really take a look at the investments that they had currently because they had gotten into some mutual funds years ago, didn't really have any contact with anyone since and really weren't sure, you know, how their money was invested or where their money was invested. Well, just Reviewing the uh, spreadsheet you put together where you look at all the investments in one place, which is really helpful. It looks to me like they're literally 90% at risk in the markets. That seems crazy to me, given the fact that they're retired and 70. 
I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it was a shock to me. Uh, it was an even bigger shock to them. They're 90, as you said, 95% in equity markets. Over half of that was in the S&P 500. Uh, we did some analysis to see what this portfolio would have done between 2007 and 2009. It was actually down over 50%. Ouch. Mm. And that's a yeah, really- I think that uh, you know, the S&P has had a great run here in the last 10 years, but a lot of people fail to realize that the previous 10 years, the S&P had a negative return. So when you even it out, it turns out all that great. But to have all your eggs in one basket that's been going straight up, that'd be quite a shock, huh, uh, huh Aaron? That's exactly right, Bob. And that's really you know what we want to try and protect people from moving forward. It's been a great decade for the S&P. We don't know what's going to happen moving forward. And that's why it's so important to not have all your eggs in one basket and really be in a diversified portfolio to protect themselves against the downside. I mean, they're retired. They need to live off the land. They need to live off this money now. Yeah. I mean, we have that saying, history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. And the thing is, the great irony of investing is you don't know how much risk you have in your portfolio when you have the most risk. And what that means is when the market's going up and up and up, you think everything's great. But I love about that analysis is that you run is we can determine how your portfolio would have done in a bear market like 2008. And that portfolio, like you said, the propensity to go down 50%. Wouldn't you like to know how much your portfolio would go down in a bad market? You need to know these things. Like It's critical. You know, another th- another big concern they had was fees and what were they paying? And looking at most of the mutual funds in their account, the majority had a front end load of between five and six percent. So these are extra wow. fees baked in that they are not even aware that they're paying when they get invested. <clears throat> yeah, that's the biggest problem I have with some of these stockbrokers out there. I had a couple just like this, Aaron, a couple of months ago, and their advisor told them that, oh, yeah, you're 70, you're 90, 100 percent in the stock market. And, oh, yeah, you would lose 50 to 60 percent if we had another 2008 and 2009. But he assured them, oh, that's never going to happen again. <laughs> I mean, he assured them. So, Wait a you minute. Know, he might have a crystal ball that we don't have. So we might want to borrow that from him so we can know the future. Well, that's the problem. When you're in a bull market, people lose their minds. And it, even though they work for a big firm, doesn't mean they're giving you great advice. Oh, it's good to have a second opinion, don't you think, Aaron? I couldn't agree more. And who would own a mutual fund in this day and age? I mean, mutual funds are higher cost typically. They're tax inefficient. And it's old school. It's like you got to get rid of those mutual funds. Like who would want to own a mutual fund now that you can own exchange traded funds, which are just a much better investment vehicle? Well, uh, because the stockbroker's got a mutual fund wholesaler coming in, taking them out to play golf, buying them dinner, <laughs> giving them golf balls. You know, right? There's a lot of uh, stuff going on in those offices. It's treacherous. You know, the really crazy thing to me about this whole case was meeting with these people. You know, they're fairly conservative. They don't want to take a lot of risk. And when we ran the projections for them, we put everything in our planning software into the 360 portal. They really don't need to take a lot of risk. Their projections look fantastic. They each have a pension, good retirement savings. Yet, without their own knowledge, they're 95% in equity markets right now. Aaron, that's that's, that's 90% of everybody we ever met with was taking more risk than necessary (laughs) to achieve their goals. Because they don't factor in the pension, the Social Security, the income that they're getting. And, you know, the fact that they're getting older, uh, you know, it finally dawns on them. But, you know, that's the number one thing that we see. And I tell you, they had to be really happy to know that they could reduce their risk, sleep well at night and not outlive their money. Absolutely. I think it's always a weight off people's shoulders when they see that projection and see, you know, that they are in good shape. Or if not, you know, what simple changes they can make to really affect their long term. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, can you think of any reason why someone shouldn't go through the same analysis? No, I mean, not unless you want to uh, be at risk of losing 50 percent of your assets and paying these hidden five and six percent, you know, front end low charges on your mutual funds. But no pressure. Do what you want. (laughs) As Bob likes to say, Aaron, another financial masterpiece. Great job on this. And and that's the thing. If you come in our offices, the biggest risk is, is probably not that you haven't saved enough. It's probably that you're taking way too much risk in your portfolio. And if the market goes down, you're just going to screw it up. And that's what we want to avoid. We only have two slots left. If you have over $500,000 safe for retirement, myself, Bob, Aaron Dessen will run for you our total financial master plan. We're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full review just like this, where we're going to analyze everything. You just need to bring those statements in, bring them in from January, bring them in a folder, bring them in the office. What we're going to do is build you just like this, your own personalized financial portal. And we're going to be able to look at your entire net worth at a bird's eye view 
And just like this, look at all the critical components. We're going to look at diversification. What underlying risks do you have in your portfolio? This couple had 95% of their money at risk in the markets and didn't even know it. We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio, show you where the risks are so you don't make those same mistakes. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Do you have an income plan for retirement? When you stop working, how are you going to draw from your portfolio? We're going to show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio and build an income plan for retirement. And we're going to look at fees and taxes. There's a lot of high cost mutual funds out there like this couple owns. There's a lot of high cost insurance products, annuities. We're going to show you what all the hidden costs are. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio and then optimize your portfolio for taxes. So there's more money in your pocket than tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has worked on for over 45 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. We only have two spots left. If you call or text right now at 844-752-6692 or simply call 844 844- Plan NYC. That's 844-PLANNYC. If you're one of the next two callers, you've saved over 500000 for retirement. Our team here at Paying Capital will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. And there's no strings attached. But there's no plan unless you text or call right now. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-P-L-A-N-N-Y-C. Well, another great show. Aaron, always great to have Aaron Dess on the show. I said the one with the strongest, deepest voice in the entire firm. I'm jealous. <laughs> Guys, it's always great to be here. Thank you for having me. You know, with this new podcast format, you can really see I have the uh, the voice for radio, but not the face. The, the... <laughs> you can really see I have the face and the voice for radio. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The looks and the voice. <laughs> You've been blessed, my man. Big Bob, enjoying the rest of the weekend here with you up in NYC. Uh, it's great to have yeah, I'm you. I'm looking and forward to see what you're doing for me tonight, Ryan. Where are we going? I mean, we're going to go out for a good dinner. We're going to uh, hopefully watch something on Netflix and uh, call it an early night, just like you would in Naples. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's just like home. <laughs> well, another great show. And as always, be bullish. We'll